spring board to enable the young, the old, the less privileged to understand what it means. and all of the various roles that he has played in nation building and uh, the public life in Nigeria. Uh, he has come to acquire and uh, display some level of what we call native intelligence that is almost unrivaled in the whole continent. President Lushak Mbasajor has really committed a lot of things and he's actually convinced that his life should be uh, an example for many generations to come so that they can be a living example for their own generation. Working in OOPL, working with His Excellency Chief Olusha Gumabasanjo has been a Shagun Obasanjo Presidential Library. To understand the story, let's start from the beginning. Olu Shagun Obasanjo Library started as an idea in 1988. Chief Olu Shagun Obasanjo envisioned a museum that will provide records and other archival materials about his life. No African leader has ever done this before. When I was growing up, we used to hear the story of the man who saw tomorrow. So I call that far sight. The ability to see what others don't see. The ability to dream without your eyes closed. Uh, I see him as someone who can look at a forest, for instance, and then in his mind conceive what will be in that place and how it will be beneficial and how it will be useful and even the level to which it will be useful in the far, in the long run. His vision catapulted him to the ranks of former President of the United States of America who since 1939 have sustained the tradition. We, we have tried to import in that and of course localize it, domesticate it to have the Nigerian fabric, the Nigerian ambience.
presidential library and to understand the way in which they were established. institutional memory very well and I thought that for any human institution even for any human being one of the things that you must have is history he kept all of those things he never threw anything away that shows discipline to be better or as good as any of those whose life history they, they're looking at. Today, his dream has translated to a 32-hectare tourism hub and a classroom of history. The Olusha Kumo Passenger Presidential Library is what you may call a sub-collective way of maintaining institutional memory of keeping record, of uh, maintaining history, of uh, uh, making that we do not trample on our culture, and of uh, really preserving something for the future. And our theme is preserving the past, capturing the present, inspiring the future and you will see all of this this is a lunch box uh, to them it's not bigger than a lunch box but, um, but i don't know where my my husband cars are A few things we have not done too well. The eight has been rightly said. It occurred to me, and then some of the things that I had, like the documents that were recovered during the Civil War from the Biafran side and all that, well, we, I, I deserved them. And, and I did. I had a special assistant whose job is to keep things and pick up things that need that must be picked up. I could not say where exactly I was. I could have been anywhere in the world. It's actually in Nigeria. It is Nigerian.
I feel happy and I feel happy for Basindo himself that his dream has come true. Um, it's one thing to have an idea. It's another thing to set it up. The following thing is then, how do you get it in place to reality? And then people see what you've been thinking on paper. In reality, you see the practicality of it. The object is standing. And it's not an easy task. You have sleepless nights, sleepless moments from your workers, your contractors, your designers, your suppliers, everything. What you will find in the library are those type of aspect of the life of Chief Olushe Gwobasunjo. Rocks, archaeological sites, heliport, honeymoon suites, senior citizen center, jogging trail, cultural village. Or the other. The feeling changes every day because at the beginning a construction is going on here and then you're beginning to see okay why did we have this here? Why did we have this here? But with the projects becoming complete every time when you drive in When I saw that 504, I just, I remember 1976 when he took over as president from, you know, late Muritala Mohammed. Um, it's a way of remind, remind, reminding ourselves of our history. Campaign for a second term. That history comes back to you, history comes alive. And this is part of the vision that this man has that, okay, even when I'm gone, the children yet unborn, or those that, are, that come after, they will be able to learn. Just like we look at the Egyptian pyramids today, and we are still learning. We, we are yet to unravel all the mysteries behind the Egyptian pyramids. This is what this So when you read his autobiography and then you come into the library and you see all these artifacts from his life, the bicycle, the Volkswagen, to the 504, to the uh, hammer tanks and what have you during his military career. In the main library, the life of the former president of Nigeria is chronicled in different artifacts, writings and pictures. The album room displays a plethora of pictures 
taken by Chief Olusha Gumabasunjo at various stages of his service life. We have three groups of records. We have the Taiko records, which is made up of mostly personal collections of the former president, the CP. We have the presidency records, made up of records during his presidency uh, civilian pres as a civilian president. The archives really are for researchers when they come, and the intellectual has been working for years even before the the library itself was open. We have been to the Center for Human Security, and that's what he wants to pursue. Chief Olusegun Obasanjo's passion for young people is the reason for the library's youth development center. As the name implies, a youth development center. Now, we have young, young people. not been developed using the international benchmarks and practice in, uh, in, video, in, in a lot of these various professions. Now, you hear of Nigerians in various parts of the world performing and doing very well. That is because they have been given a level playing field and they have been well prepared in those other societies. The library also excites visitors with its tourism potentialities. This is OOPL's Wildlife Park. City. The Randa Fun Sport has a major role to play to complement the library. In So it's really, really uh, for, it's really adds to the, it's like the icing on the cake of the presidential library. When I see even the kids, when the parents bring the kids, they don't want to go home back because most of the things that here uh, this uh, site are not uh, regular things that are at home for the children. So they come here, they see other kids, they play al 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 alongside. You see some of them when their parents say, okay, it's time for us to go, they start crying. So it's fun, it's, it's fulfilling, it's really, really amazing because uh, and once I come, I see all those excitement. It keeps us uh, going, it's really, really amazing. I mean, of course, they will want to eat. We have restaurants that run 24 hours. Of course, they will want to have a drink.
The Olusegun Obasanjo Presidential Library is motivating thousands of young leaders. We've used the story of Obasanjo to show that Africans and indeed a Nigerian has gotten to this level and his life can be an exemplary one for others to emulate. I'm greatly inspired. He's been a lucky person in the sense that he was always there when history has to be made. And to that extent, he's a historical character. Now, people describe him, they say, as an enigma in the sense that some of his actions are not immediately clear to people. And yet, on hindsight, you appreciate why he did it. The library has raised the bar in Africa.